difficult? Um, everything. Um, I mean, the, first, the immediate difficulty you have with this piece is that it's got um, a very long introductory orchestral tutti, followed by one of the most difficult solo entries in the repertoire, which is a big passage. Followed by a double octave passage. And a rather nasty flourish. All of which the pianist has to do cold because you haven't had a chance to warm up by that point. And that's the first solo entry. And after that point, there is simply nowhere where the piano stops. Barring one sort of um, one minute break in the last movement, the piano is playing continuously. Also, I think it's fair to say that the Henselt Piano Concerto is the first truly symphonic concerto. He took as his model Chopin's F minor concerto, um, which is a much lighter work which alternates in the more traditional style of having an orchestral tutti solo episode and these things alternate without really integrating. Beethoven started to move in this direction and Henselt I think was the first concerto, the first concerto composer where you had a fully integrated solo part. Um, meaning, well let's take for example the ultimate composer of symphonic piano concertos was Rachmaninoff. His second piano concerto, which of course everybody knows um, Rachmaninoff played the Henzel Piano Concerto and um, he would have been very, very familiar with the style of writing and this reappears in the Henzel Concerto. Whatever the notes are. Um, and that's clearly what Rachmaninoff took as a model. And there are other examples of double note writing. Ears, that could be taken straight out of Rachmaninoff's third piano concerto, and I think that he's taken a lot of cues from Henselt. That was brilliant. Was it? Thank you so much. So, is yes. that it? <laughs>